So namaste everybody welcome and today i have uh, neel mukherjee who's a legendary guitar player and composer and uh, really glad to have him on the on the podcast uh, welcome neel thanks a lot for making the time hey thanks a million for having me here and it's I'm a really pleasure honored. man uh, it's a real pleasure likewise uh, so i thought uh, maybe we could start by uh, you know talking a little bit about Uh, your days in Calcutta and how how you started off and what the kind of milieu was at that time. Right. Well, I started off when I was quite young. In fact, I guess I was about eleven. That's when my grandmother got me a guitar for Durga Puja. Uh, instead of you know we get new clothes and stuff for pujas and stuff, right? So instead of clothes, she got me a guitar, and that—that's it. I mean, ever since I'm playing the guitar, and it stuck to me. And uh, yeah, so I—I I started playing a normal six-string uh, steel string acoustic guitar, and uh, yeah, and I loved it very much. You know, it was something I could. focus on and uh, yeah i loved it basically so my uncle taught me some basics about finger style guitar playing and got me started on flamenco and things like that and uh, yeah i mean by the time i got into my teens and end of about class 10 or 9 or something like that i started playing a little bit of blues and stuff like that and, and then around just after my 10th boards i remember i mean there there was this great person who came into my life uh, somebody called purnendu das who was in the great songwriter and actually a fabulous classical guitarist and classical and folk he used to live in london and uh, used to write songs in bengali brilliant songs and i had a brief association before he went back to england and when he left back for england he left his classical guitar with me and you know that was like a major turning point because you know you need an instrument to sort of progress in it with it so getting that classical guitar you know helped me a lot i started you know playing more of flamenco and classical guitar and other finger style stuff and actually i i from a very from the start i was like I was not into one kind of music, you know. You know, being from Kolkata and being from I mean because of my family also in my family, my uncles and all they practice, they played music and they listen to various kinds of music and so for which, you know, I got to hear very different kinds of stuff from very from a very young age like i remember i was quite a kid when i uh heard you know john coltrane and miles davis and things like that and so i i wasn't stuck to one genre of music and being from kolkata i remember great khayal being sung khayal what you call khayal khayal we that's how we bong pronounce it i mean fantastic stuff you know and you know remember attending you know the dovalin music conference and remember attending kishor kumar and nights and you know all kinds of things it was like plus you know was exposed to a lot of baul music uh, all kinds of things so it was like a very kitschy sort of a 
situation, like pretty much what everyone is facing these days. With you know, we are all exposed to um, multicultural, multi you know multicultural environment because of technology not because of you know things like migration and things like that you know people who would have migrated somewhere and they would come back with records and and that's how one will get to hear it and things like that and uh, yeah man that was pretty much it so then then of course like with teenage rock and roll entered big time i mean i have been like uh, then at some point of time i started like getting a little bit not a little bit quite heavily into rock and roll like blues and a lot of blues in fact i love the blues and uh, yeah, at the same time, you know, things like Paco de Lucia and uh, a lot of classical, Western classical music, like Bach and Tarega and uh, Lobe and uh, others, you know happened in my life so it, it was pretty much you know all kinds of things that i was trying to digest and it was a little difficult at times but nevertheless i i loved all everything that i you know i sort of was greedy about everything so yeah like that so serious heavy influences huh? but uh, what was the scene yeah, like yeah i mean in Calcutta in would have Kolkata, been something, you know, or in those days. Mm, Kolkata, Kolkata has always had a, like, a huge music or rather arts loving population. I mean, I mean, obviously we are on the Gangetic Plain, so which made which also means like uh, yeah like growing food was easy and there was a lot of time to sit in you know work on arts and stuff like that so but calcutta traditionally you know it was uh, it, it's a city where the first jazz recording happened and there was like i mean indian traditional music that is, you know, like say the Hindustani obviously had a very strong, there's a strong culture of there. I mean, there are a lot of practitioners of that form of music. In fact, my mother, my grandfather, they were all into like very serious Indian classical stuff, you know. I mean, it took me. <laughs> learn it and all this and I always thought she didn't know much but it took me a good 30 years to know that oh man she knows quite a bit and uh, yeah so that that like the traditional music I mean obviously everyone knows that Calcutta had a fantastic audience for classical music and stuff like that. At the same time, there was this parallel music because of, uh, you know, colonization, because Kolkata was a port, because I mean, multiple historical reasons for it. And there was a strong, there was a strong culture of Western music practice in Kolkata, you know, like people like Louis Banks and uh, they they actually did a lot of stuff in Kolkata. They, you know, there's a street called Park Street, which had a, which had many restaurants and all which would feature uh, live bands and things like that. And a lot of great people have played there, you know, so 
that was another scene where you know you know bands would be playing a lot of pop music there was a very good jazz music scene in kolkata you know you know like people like anto menezes louis banks and carlton kitto and uh, all these people you know they are like great great uh, musicians and fabulous musicians in fact they all they had their stint in kolkata and uh, clive the drummer singer i i got to see all of quite a few of them and and by the time you know i i mean in my late school years and all that you know there was uh there were bands like shiva there was this fantastic band called the high which uh, which consisted of uh, a leg- like a fabulous songwriter singer musician called dilip balakrishnan okay he he dilip balakrishnan nandon bagchi lu held and i think shubir shubir uh, chatterjee who who is now who was later turned into a filmmaker in bombay and you know he has this company called white lights or something acha i mean quite a famous successful ad filmmaker so the high was another fabulous band i mean i got to so see very little of dilip balakrishnan but i remember that left a huge uh, mark on me because you know it was i saw i mean fabulous stuff you know and they were singing songs they had written in english and original stuff and naturally very cool and uh stuff like that you know and uh, and of course at the same time i must uh, say that you know like as a child when like that was the year 77 or something i got to see uh, mohiner ghoraguli the band the original lineup i mean uh, which they cut a few eps in fact three of them that was also fantastic i mean they were writing songs in bengali and uh, under very trying situations in the sense you know recording was difficult you know yeah making a living was difficult all this but nevertheless they they made lot of very good music and i was like a kid when i saw them do it and uh, yeah and then you know later on you know i got to see shiva and uh, i think quite a few other bands you know we had barefoot we had uh, shiva we had other bands and then i myself became part of a band which uh, was known as crosswinds and we did quite i was i stuck around with the band for 7 years played all around the country and i think it's i mean it was like a fabulous experience playing with the band and uh, very formative and very educative for me because uh, you learn a lot when you play in a band you know because uh, you have to execute the music i mean it's no longer theory or anything it's just one look at each other and you start playing the music and you have to be bang on and if you're playing like full nights you know like 3 4 hour long dance gigs you better be good man you better be you know having songs under your belt and you better be like grooving well you better be you know I mean it was great you know but the band was fabulous and got up and uh, yeah with the band we used to play a lot of initially we were like a english cover band you know right 
like playing different bands like Iron Maiden, Santana, Police, Beatles, all kinds of things, you know. Uh, all kinds of things, you know, we played. And we even played like some top 40 music for dance gigs, you know, like Hope Joanna and... Nice. Uh, yeah, all kinds of things, you know, like uh, Madonna's music. And, I mean, we had to learn a whole lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, we played, we were initially a cover band and then at some point of time, I think we uh, started playing live cons, like, like more like concerts as opposed to like dance gigs and stuff. <clears throat> concerts and uh, we then eventually started writing some songs in English. We played a gig at Mood Indigo here in Bombay. I think the year was 93 or 4. I remember we flew down from Kolkata and blah blah this and that. We thought we'd like really hit the scene. Yeah, but it was like very exciting, no doubt. And here playing at Rang Bhavan with all other bands from India, it was like super fun. Then we landed a recording deal with, I mean, we came out, the band came out with a two song cassette, you know, one song on each side. So, two English uh, originals from Crosswinds. So, yeah, and, uh, yeah, so, and uh, at the same time, yeah, what else? My uncle, uh, Gautam Chatterjee, he started, he, not started, he was writing songs anyway. And then he had this project where he want he, was supposed to make a bunch of music videos for which he needed like uh, songs and stuff like that. So, so a lot of people sang like like Orunda's songs and a lot of his songs and then he got then he got the band that was Crosswinds to play one of his songs, which is called Prithvi Tanaki. And uh, which actually became like a cult song in no time. I mean, the, I remember, you know, it was like a huge hit. And, and then I think Pritham redid the song in Hindi or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was Prithivi and Crosswinds played it and actually we arranged the whole song. It, it was uh, very different initially. Obviously we... And, uh, with full on like drums, bass, electric guitars and harmonies and screaming and blah blah. And it had like fabulous uh, lyrics and the tune was marvelous so that happened and then after some time i then after some time you know i wrote a bunch of bengali songs and it so happened that we landed up with no gigs for 31st night once i think that was 95 i think we thought we were like very big and we Quoted too much of money everywhere, and then we like we landed up with no no gig. So it was like quite disheartening. I remember, and um, then uh, and all you know they suggested like then then we were like we had these bunch of I had these like songs which were ready and. 
then that's when we decided we'll go and record these songs and a friend of mine borrowed us some money i mean lent us some money borrowed no we borrowed some money from my friend his name is shivaram who was a sailor and he was kind enough to give us some money to record and we recorded an album called potka chiveke in flat 3 days eight songs and recorded mixed mastered in that time and which eventually turned out to be quite a like a lot of people here have heard it and they still talk about it and things like that and yeah that's a yeah. kind of cult album man that i've, I've heard so yeah, much a lot of people say things like that i don't know about it but a lot of people say that yeah it's great and things like that i don't uh, know to be honest but i know that i am i'm very proud of it i mean to have done that and uh, but it also post that album i started having a musical identity crisis in the sense that i when i heard that i thought man i mean it's it's good but you know there was nothing from where i was from you know there was no like say subcontinental melody element in it rather so other than the language which was bengali i mean other than that you know it could be spanish or it could be like rock and roll it could be like some latin stuff or whatever i mean so that's uh, that sort of i mean that got me thinking little bit you know so and uh, that sort of that, that that was a bit of a crisis in my life and then i started looking for for something you know some actually i was looking for looking to learn a bit of indian music and that's when i came to anantharaman sir he was a he was a music of carnatic carnatic music teacher in kolkata actually and he is i think direct descendant of uh, muttaswami dikshitar oh really okay yeah and he is actually fabulous i mean for me he, he meaning i start that time i remember i had long hair and a rough look looking face even rougher than what it is now <laughs> and i landed up in the in that sort of a carnatic music environment and he sent me back quite a few times you know yeah come tomorrow come day after this that but i didn't give it up then he you know okay you come then it was like he showed me the basic gamakas and i was like wow he sort of opened a window for me you know he said boy just i'm opening this window just look out just see what's there and you know that that's that's when this uh, meaning i started uh, learning the music that was from our i mean music from our land you know because before that you know oh <laughs> everything was like very western because you know guitar you if you guitar play you can't you know i played western basically western forms of music right. and i didn't know how to so anantharaman sir started started me on this and it was like and i i was very serious about it and you know it took me many years to you know get a hang of it but i'm glad that i started it and i'm getting to see the fruits like now sort of you know i'm being, beginning to feel little better about it now because initially it wasn't 
that great but yeah it's it worked and then that thing sort of eventually i started you know getting a little uh, i felt that my time with the band was coming to an end and i could feel it you things and and i thought um then this idea to move to chennai came to me um i thought that you know i left kolkata and as luck would have it our my last gig with the band was it again stayed back yeah and when i stayed there for another 15 years till i packed my bags and now i'm in mumbai so yeah like that and fascinating what was chennai like yeah chennai must have been interesting chennai was fabulous i mean for me you know like uh, i was very like one track minded you know very music music i want to do music i want to a hey, this and music music was apparently the only thing in life which is not true actually uh chennai was fabulous actually i mean you know you're from india also right so you know how it is you know i don't know there you know the music scene is like kick ass i mean like fabulous musicians everywhere and it's very nice it's super good and wonderful people and you know i was quite brave in fact i landed up in chennai with 3000 rupees and three guitars Right. didn't have a place to stay didn't have anything but uh, yeah i mean if that's your destiny nothing can stop you i um, i mean a friend was kind enough to give me a place to live in and the kinds of things man i mean So I got to. I started working with Rahman Ji and other South Indian music directors, and I mean that's how I would make a living for myself. Because and it was also the first time I started staying away from home. Had to you know pay rent, manage myself. It was it was also a great life lesson, you know. and uh, you yeah, also and then i also had to start studying eventually there i started playing with bands and things like that it was actually very nice and in chennai uh also composed and produced the music of kashti uh, which was basically boni and myself he sang and a bunch of other friends from chennai who who worked on that album chennai and also dwight our bass player from crosswinds he played bass and that was another very good experience to you know producing that album and that was in 2000 we recorded it and and recorded with like very high production sensibilities and stuff like that you know i mean we recorded everything live got a string orchestra to play very good musicians like martin visa then uh, balu then dwight and you know who else Oh, Sri Ram, Sri Rama, Palakkad Sri Ram. He played flute on one track, and 
They're all like fab. Paul Jacob, he played some drums and co-produced the album with me. Things like that, you know. And Didier Weiss was the engineer on board. I mean, he's a Frenchman and he's worked with, you know, Manu Kache and Yusu Endor and all these people. And, and he knew his things. And yeah, that was also a great thing. Right. So then you moved to Bombay, huh? And then what was Bombay like? Bombay must have been a different world, no? Ah, Bombay. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, from 1998 to 2008, I lived 10 years. I was in Chennai continuously. And then 2008, November, I think. Yeah, November. I came to Bombay just to check out. Okay, let's see what the possibilities are. And uh, the reason being that at that point of time I needed, I wanted to make some more money and usual greed got into my system. And no, actually I needed because I was married then and you know, obviously I. So I came to Bombay and and as luck would have it, I started getting work here. So, so and you know, Bombay was nice. I mean, then I took up a place here and you know, I was like doing two cities and staying, like spending some time in Bombay, some time in Chennai and like that. And, and that went on for about five years and then then I packed up everything in Chennai and I'm in Bombay from 2013. Earlier, you know, those five years I was like going back and forth and stuff. It was getting a little hectic, but that's how it was. Nice. Right. So uh, what have you been up to in Bombay, yeah? post moving there? in terms of um, playing and producing and yeah i mean yeah i was doing the same stuff that i've been doing always which is like composing producing playing music and stuff so for bombay you know i started doing a lot more of advertising work i mean that that was my mainstay and in that time, I had scored for a feature film in Bengali, a film from Bangladesh, which is called Mehrjan. Okay. Okay, and uh, that that film score actually fetched me about three awards, I think, in, like international film festivals and like best movie scores and stuff like that. So that was also like a major landmark in my life because you know. Producing that score was also very uh, satisfying, and uh, yeah, that that happened around 2009, 10, 11 types, you know. And I scored the music for Meherjan in like in Chennai as well as in Kolkata. I recorded some of the stuff, but it was mainly finished in Chennai. You know, I had some lovely people to work on it madhu biju they are the they were the engineers and so they really did a fabulous job and yeah i, uh, I was very happy doing it so like that yeah so mad jan happened and then then you know Bombay, Bombay usual ads were happening and this and that. And uh, then uh, eventually I started putting, I mean, recording some guitar, solo guitar and duo guitar stuff. So yeah, and that's going on. 
Nice. And uh, now you've uh, recorded an album in Bangla again, right? I had heard some yes, stuff yes, last time I, we met. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, after a long time, I released some self-composed and written songs in Bengali. Because that's something I keep doing, you know. I write songs in Bengali anyway. Whether they get released or not, I keep doing it. So that's that's a very important that's a very important part of me I would say because I consider myself a Bangalore writer. So that's uh, yeah. So we have a band in Kolkata which is called we're calling it Neil Mukho. And uh, yeah, we have a. I, we intend to do a bunch of. I mean, we recorded some nine songs already, and out of which four are released, five more to go. I've written some more stuff. We eventually want to record and release. Yeah, by the way, how do you see the COVID thing here? Yeah? Post COVID world is going to be quite something for us. Not something that uh, I don't think we'll ever get to see again. I mean, I can't even imagine like 25th of March, I was out on the street, on a Bombay street, which is like filled with people most of the time. Always, not most of the time. I mean, you never get to see it empty. It was like no one on it. I mean, it was like... Man, what a... I mean... It's, I mean, now how many, from 24th March, I think, that's when, the, or 23rd March, 23rd April, May, June. So three months gone already, yeah, I mean. Yeah, man. We, we have gotten, gotten used to it and uh, people are dying, people are getting infected and... I mean, how scared we have gotten, huh? I mean, how just a small thing can turn the entire world upside down, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, we are all experiencing it, you know, like it's, it's a complete uh, bust actually. <laughs> <laughs> it also comes with a very strong message that uh, that we need to get a little humble about the way we live, not be so greedy, start uh, start respecting nature because you know. It, it was like just a cosmic slap from nature, you know. I mean, like a small bloody virus. You can't even, in spite of your uh, advancements, in spite of being so civilized, so this thing, you can't do jack shit, you know. I mean, you haven't got a vaccine for it. I mean, you might get it, you won't get it, or... It, it means that nature is very powerful. You don't mess with her, you know. I mean, and we need to change a whole lot of things ourselves. That was always the case, but COVID was a nice slap on all of us. That's and we needed it definitely. I think. Yeah, that's true, man. We did need it. I mean, look at, you know, I mean, initially though, I was like enjoying and loving it, the quiet, because silence is very expensive, man. Yeah. Especially if you're living in a city like Bombay, Kolkata, or anywhere if you're in an urban situation, you're like, oh man, the kind of noise levels we have to deal with is just not funny. And it's just not good for your, your, your health, you know, like. For your nervous system, for your mind, for your psych, for everything, you know, it's it's just not, I mean, imagine you like hearing the sound of a drilling machine throughout the day. 
I mean, what will it do to you? I mean, what? And imagine the situation of the guy who operates it. And yeah, so initially those, uh, initially that silence and all was like was marvelous. I was like playing a lot of guitar. I was like quite thrilled with the fact that I have to deal with lesser noise, this, that. But then again, you know, we saw all those, uh, we had the migrant laborers problem, you know, we saw... Uh, it gets a little crazy, you know, to see so much of mass tragedy. I mean, you know, like... It's a lot, lot of it, you know. I mean, my source of information is the internet and, you know, news platforms and all that. So it is like devastating stuff, you know. And, you know, and the general scare that people are living in, you know, just the fear of losing your life, the fear of being infected, the fear of passing it on the fear of, you know, you yourself contracting it, very high and, uh, you know, and on top of that, of course, the economy, I mean, yeah. we're all busted now, you know, like, our earnings are gone, you know, we, we still have to pay rents, we have to, crazy times, I mean, this, gen we haven't seen a war, so far, I mean, we haven't seen the World War Three or anything. Like the earlier generation, my parents and all, they got to see one of the wars. And, and I've heard stories like, you know, there would be blackouts because, you know, they would fear bombing and this and that. And this time there was no need for a blackout. It was all blacked out. You know? I mean, not a single soul on the... And not from bombs, you know, just from a bloody... From a virus, you know, so which is like... Which needs a microscope to be seen. And <laughs> it's funny as hell, yeah. No bombs, just a virus. We just, uh, yeah, it's actually, I mean, we are like, like it's a bust, but it's also, I mean, I don't think I'm going to see these times again in my life. Very special times. I mean, very special. I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy is, crazy is the word. And uh, important to remain healthy, try and remain as healthy as possible. Keep a good uh, mental frame and emotional frame because it's, it's tough times, you know. I mean, many of us who have music and arts and all that are sort of going through it in a it's a little easier for us in the sense you understand how blessed you are when you can play an instrument or you know you can sing or you can spend time reading or you can do other things you know but there are people who just don't know how to deal with this you know you know they just don't know how to stay at home because like guys like us we've been quarantined for god knows how many years you know, we've been staying home for all our bloody lives, you know, I mean, <laughs> only go out once in a while, do something and then come back and stay put at home and... Yeah, we are really lucky, yeah, to have something to fall back on. Covid and plus... Yeah, yeah. Plus, we had that cyclone in Bengal. Oof. 
that was such a mother, <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 bust, bust. It's all descending. Huh? <laughs> It's a lot of fun to look at it ten years from now, you know, and reflect upon what these times were like. Yeah, it's great fun looking at it now. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's fantastic. So there'd be a little tense about it, but nevertheless, it's um, yeah. Yeah, man, very interesting times. But now the since you mentioned. You know the economics of it, and how we're all bust. And uh, so, the last time we spoke, we uh, we spoke about um, royalties and intellectual property rights and stuff. So, would you like to say something about that? About what you think about that? Well, to be honest, I don't know much about it, but uh, but it's important for us musicians to you know to inform ourselves about the legalities of it because you know uh, well the system is quite corrupt as we all know you know i mean it's not like not like what it is in the west you know where it's it's a very streamlined well oiled machinery you know i mean they're not but here you know it's like quite strange you know uh, so it's uh, important that we learn about it and sort of negotiate it in the right spirit so that at least we can save our own backsides you know so, i mean not that I mean, at least I'm not like somebody who's a hit producer or anything. But in case someday something happens, you know, if, it'll be nice to make some money and you know, things like that. I mean, forget about me. You know, I know of successful super hit music directors who have not got their royalties from. I know of it. You know, I mean. And the, it's a corporate practice that has gone on for you know years, and it's accepted, but it's not right. You know, you know imagine you build a house, you buy, it, then you don't have papers for it, and uh, not fair, not fair. You can't do that. So I'm trying to sort of understand it, and I know it's already late, but as the good book says, better late than never. I'm trying to. I, I'll try to do my bit. At least own my content, whatever little it is. I mean, it's fine that I. Yeah, that's it. Since nothing lasts forever, this won't. So it's good. Yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, man. Like, so, yeah, Keshav, thank you for you know making me talk so much. Hey, thanks a lot for coming. Yeah, uh, it's been really, really fun. Super. Lovely. So... It was great speaking to you. Um, and I'm sure. Thank you. Same here. And I'm sure whoever whoever ends up listening to this is going to really enjoy it. Uh, that I don't know, but yeah, it was lovely <laughs> talking to you. But yeah, pleasure, man. Thanks a lot for for being here. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Kishore.